Cheers. Mm. It's been a few weeks since I made a video. I'll blame my laziness on the holiday season, but it's time to shake those cobwebs off. And I'm here to do a video on my top three best bases and top three worst bases of 2023. I'm doing this video in collaboration with a couple of my other YouTube base pals, um, Bully the Kid, Sono Jono, and Floof the Bassist. Um, I haven't watched their lists yet, but um, I'll put a link to their channels down below so you can check those out if you're interested after this video. I'm extremely easy to please when it comes to bass guitars, so instead of having a list of me just saying everything's great, I picked a theme for my top best bases and my top worst bases. And I'll start off with my top three worst bases of 2023. The quality control issues that I talk about didn't affect every single base that was shipped out, but it was enough to make us stink about. These are gonna be in order from uh, least expensive to most expensive. Number one, coming in at $450 is the Epiphone Newport base. I will say this, I do enjoy the way this sounds. Some of these were shipped with poorly cut nuts and pickups that are out of phase. Um, quality control issues aside, there's not really a whole lot going on here. Again, I said I like the way it sounds, but there was a bass that I'm going to talk about later on in this video that was released that basically makes this one um, not worth it. Number two. Coming in at $1,200 is the Fender Gold Foil Jazz Bass. I could hear it now, but it's good. But it's good, I swear. I will defend it a little bit. Love the way it looks. Anytime the body matches the headstock, it's infinite style points in my book. And also, I really enjoy the way it sounds. But again, it was shipped with quality control issues, such as a misaligned bridge. Now imagine you have three strings that sound really good and one that doesn't sound good at all. That's this right here. It was given the nickname the Tinfoil Jazz Bass because of how bad it was upon release. And that nickname is so popular that that's what I hear people most commonly refer to this bass as. I very rarely hear people call it the Gold Foil Jazz Bass. This could just be my opinion, but I believe that if you're paying for an instrument that costs over a thousand dollars, it should come with very little if no issues at all. I have to cut this video up because my girlfriend's making chicken salad in the kitchen. She's being really loud. Quality control issues aside, there's not really a whole lot you're getting here for a whole lot of money and that's why it's on the list for my top worst bases. Number three, what? Coming in at $1,600 is the Fender Mike Kerr Signature Jaguar. This, like everything else, was also shipped with some quality control issues, such as a misaligned bridge, again, and horribly unbalanced pickups. I've read people trying to justify their purchases by saying things like, well, maybe that's how it's supposed to be because Mike Kerr splits his signal. Just take the L. If I spent $1,600 on something like this, and it was shipped to me in the state that some people got theirs, I would be so angry. You should not have to bring your premium priced bass guitar to a guitar shop to get it fixed right out of the box. That's absolutely ridiculous to me. You shouldn't have to fix it yourself either. $1,600? Just in terms of bass guitars and instruments, I could do damage with $1,600. In fact, this is the perfect segue because with $1,600, you could buy every single one of the bases on my top three best bass list and still have money left over for lunch for the week. Number one, coming in at $200 is the Squire Sonic Series Precision Bass. When I first started my YouTube channel, I would just demo affordable bass guitars and I love to see things like this because bases like this are accessible to pretty much everyone. Cops, man! The cops are coming! They're built nicely, and they're accessible to pretty much everybody. Number two, coming in at $450, is the Squire Paranormal Rascal Base. 
This one I think is the coolest one on my list because it's just so unique. Again, matching headstock, infinite style points. It looks like it's getting gold stars across the board and I wouldn't be surprised if it's most base players base of the year. This is the same price as the Epiphone Newport base, but the Squire Rascal absolutely wipes the floor with that base. Now this list wouldn't be complete if I didn't have something on there that I genuinely enjoy. If you know me, you know what I like. Coming in at around $600 is the Sire P5R. The R stands for Rosewood. This is exactly what I like. Look at it. Look at it. This will be on that rack and on this channel next year. The options for five string straight precision bases is extremely limited, but thanks to Sire, we got this beauty here and it's extremely affordable. It looks great. It sounds awesome, and I'm gonna find out if it plays amazing. To be continued. That's my list of top best and top worst bases of 2023. Um, if you disagree with anything I said, let me know in the comments. That's always fun. Again, shout out to my base friends, Bully the Kid, Sono Jono, and Floof the Bassist. Thanks for listening. Take care and have a happy new year.